And this is the Pat Kenny Show with Anton in for Pat. France has just announced a strategy against over-tourism with plans to regulate visitors at its most popular sites. Joining me is Owen Curry, editor of Air and Travel magazine. Owen, is this a case of too much of a good thing? Uh, pretty much. A lot of people um, talk about getting more tourists. Uh, France is very proud of its position as being the most visited uh, to a country in the world in terms of international tourism. Um, and then uh, when they get a lot of tourists, obviously pressure points appear all over the place and there's a complaints about over tourism. takes a bit of management, takes a bit of management of the message around it and certainly it takes a lot of management of uh, relationship with your own people who live in those areas. How exactly is the management going to work? Because it, it isn't just saying to people don't come. That's exactly what you do. You end up uh, telling people to come at different times. Uh, you end up with, uh, uh, you know, how do you d- distribute your international tourism offering? Because every single country in the world, and I go to the big tourism event every March, Rendezvous France, it's every second year in Paris, every second year in one of the provincial cities. They all have regions that just don't get enough tourists. Um, you know, there's it's a common problem internationally. Uh, places like Barcelona and Dubai, Brovnik uh, are always complaining about too many tourists but then you go to within that same country Tarragona just down the coast from Barcelona saying we don't get enough uh, Istria up the coast from Dub- Dubrovnik always saying we need more tourists so it's a um, we've seen Anton uh, since the arrival of the internet the, you would have thought there would be a democratization of tourism that people would find little hidden jewels all over we've actually seen the opposite we've seen this tourists generate to the same 20 20 or 30 spots worldwide, take their Instagram photograph and move on to the next one. When they go there though, Owen, they bring their wallets. So why are people concerned in these areas about an influx of tourism? Because it it fills the hotels, it fills the restaurants, it fills the gift shops. Yeah, that's a long and involved debate. It's a debate within Ireland as well, by the way. We do have over tourism choke points within our own country. Um, They quest, they where does the benefit go? What sort of pressures does it put on the system? The big debate uh, in Barcelona is what the uh, pressures does it put on local accommodation? And we've seen a sort of a derivative of that argument uh, in some of the Irish major cities. So what you know, the, what par- what the, the French tourist board are looking at is we've got um, they've they've got ninety million, get eight times the number of tourists we did. They get ninety million tourists a year, a good deal ahead of Spain. Interest. Interestingly enough, when one of the events, when Spain was catching up, the French were very, very vociferous that they wanted to keep this position. The problem then is, how do you disperse those tours within France? And France is a very diverse uh, country. It offers everything, the, the, the sea, the sun, the, the, the mountains, uh, the, the inland lake, lakes and the rivers. So it does have a, quite a, an interesting mix of tourism. The problem internationally is that people generate towards four or five spots and they they're, they're pretty good at managing them. You know, the, the key, we would have six tourist attractions in Ireland, Anton, that have over one million visitors. They have six that have over three million. Um, the biggest by far manages itself, looks after itself, Disneyland. And the Louvre, um, about eight million. Versailles, of seven and a half million. Eiffel Tower, about six million. Their issue really isn't getting people to and from those. It's the queuing, it's the management of the crowds there. The spend that you mentioned, uh, a lot of people say the spend doesn't disperse enough. And we, do, you, what tends to happen, and we see it, for instance, in County Clare, the Cliffs of Mar, a lot of compl- you know, it's one, it's our second biggest tourist attraction, one and a half million visitors a year pre-pandemic. I was down there yesterday, really well managed nowadays in terms of getting people in and out. But a lot of people say uh, we need those tourists to disperse a little bit more through the other attractions in County Clare. Very easy to say, very difficult to do, Anton. Although there has been an attempt in Ireland, I would have thought, to achieve that, Owen, with things like the Wild Atlantic Way branding and the Ancient East branding, where you move from those individual focal points into a slightly larger regional marketing. Bit of effort gone into it. They, we're very imbalanced. Uh, to, and if you look at the number of international visitors to Ireland, 
uh, of Ireland, you get uh, just over 37% land in, in the wild Atlantic way. It's big, long, dispersed. Well, it's pretty well managed, but oh, 80% of those are the half of it below Galway, only 20% to half above. D- Dublin gets, uh, it does very well, it gets about 35% of our tours. The ancient East gets 14%. That would be the Leinster region spreading up to Cavan and places like that. North and six counties in Northern Ireland gets 11%. And then you have the um, what um, one of the comedians calls the wet middle, the hidden heartlands, 2.5% of our international tours. Very easy to say we should get that up, but it's really hard. International branding is all about those fantastic West of Ireland locations. It's not about Longford West, Mead, the Boglands, Lully Moor, wonderful attractions like that. So we need, uh, it's something easier to say than to deliver. And probably the biggest problem is when you've got so many competing interests, international country against country, you know, Ireland likes it to put up its tourism product and say, uh, come here instead of the similar countries, a similar country would be Scotland. And then you to get them in, you need those sort of big flagship iconic attractions. And then after they arrive, uh, people start complaining they're all arriving in the same places it's a contradiction in terms that the entire tourism industry never got its head around you mentioned the democratization that was expected to have happened from the internet is there another challenge with the internet in if you take france's context the louvre would be well practiced in receiving tens of thousands hundreds of thousands millions of visitors likewise disneyland would be well practiced but we now have this phenomenon where a single netflix series can turn a village into a global tourist destination and the infrastructure isn't there to cope with the uh, the influx that then happens i think the same has happened with is it the, the netflix series lupa has driven a huge spike in tourism in a relatively small area in france Absolutely. Uh, you know, people people end up, uh, with, sometimes the locals aren't even aware of what's happening. Uh, people drive up looking for attractions that aren't ready there. The accommodation isn't there. The beds aren't there. The roads aren't there. We saw it in Ireland. We had, um, you know, for, for a few years there, we had the major uh, television attraction, Game of Thrones, although that's a very well dispersed Dubrovnik, Iceland, get a slice of that. Uh, the Irish Tourism Ireland did rode that for everything they could. They worked it for everything they could. They threw to Game of Thrones imagery around. Um, we had Star Wars. Um, so we had, you know, so in the, to take Star Wars, to pick it out, Skellig, um, Skellig Michael is in no position to accept a huge influx of visitors. Uh, Malin Head doesn't have the road structures to cope, so we had backed up traffic. We also had a very interesting decision in Clare, where they're very into, uh, very conscious of sustainable tourism, that they didn't really want Loop Head included in the imagery and in the promotion. Real Star Wars fans would know that that featured as well, but it wasn't going to be what it wasn't going to be pushed because you've got to remember, uh, there's a lot of talk about sustainable tourism in terms of the carbon footprint and all of that. There's also people living here. There are also farmers uh, delivering their silage and their hay on small roads. There are people that need to go about their ordinary business and there's uh, local local councils that have to keep roads and infrastructure in repair for the local community, not for the huge influx of summer. So they were less enthusiastic about getting huge numbers of tourists into, um, you know, have a look, have a gawk, get out again, put all the local infrastructure under pressure. It's a big, it's, it's something that... You know, we tend to see we we tend to see tourism as a sort of an ATM. Um, that's what's the money that's to be gained out of it short term. Um, and then what we've seen a little bit of uh, in the last couple of years is what are the long term consequences of it. I think that's what's going on in France. I think that's the debate that is going to start here because the French are very pro tourist. Not every country is. I think that in Ireland we're also going to have to or we we've started the process of sitting back and looking at it where the debate goes horribly wrong very quickly is when it's seen in absolutist terms when people grab a few stats off the internet and run with them without looking at the overall context to it we've seen a little bit of that in the accommodation debate it's a long it's a it's a complex 
uh, thing with very many moving parts, but this one really important thing has to be at the back of it all. If you start messing with your with the tourist business, a successful tourist business like we had pre eleven million pre pandemic, we're going to be back close to that this year. And you start saying to tourists, "Oh well, we only want a few of you. We only want the high end." And you start playing with all the great imagery and the great messaging that Ireland has done over many years. It's very hard to repair it if it starts going wrong. It's very hard to get back into a game that you have um, dropped the ball uh, at, at a crucial point of it. And that's where we have to keep uh, keep mindful of all the moving parts in tourism when we start talking about over, over tourism and diverting tourists away from our attractions. Owen, thank you. That's Owen Curry, editor of Air and Travel magazine.